So, here I am on this uh, 1982 Yamaha XJ1100 Maxim. And it's a fun little bike, very comfortable. It's not quite my style. This uh, sitting way back thing is uh, it's comfy and all. I just I feel a little less engaged with the road when I sit so far back. But uh, it is uh, it is comfy. Can't deny that. Big old wide seat, nice and springy. I mean, it's a 35 year old seat and it's still cushy. <laughs> what a deal! So they did something right back back in '82. So it's only got uh, 21,500 and some odd miles on it. I recently replaced the spark plugs. That seemed to help it ride a lot smoother. The spark plugs that Lula had been replacing some time. Still needs a little bit of carb work though. It idles high and uh, I think it's burning more fuel than what it should be. And this thing doesn't, I suppose it didn't give about 30 miles a gallon anyway. With a little bit of carb I've adjusted. I don't know what I'm getting. Um, that first thing I did a lot of idling and, and uh, testing stuff out so I can't really count the first tank as any kind of fuel economy. Um, but I mean here I am with uh, 45 miles on it and it's already two bars down. I don't really know what that means. It's a six gallon tank and the last bar was uh, was trying to disappear on me <clears throat> and I, I still had two gallons in the tank. So I don't know. I didn't realize where the uh, odometer reset was when I first fueled up because I basically I bought it, uh, it was low on fuel, so I filled it up and rode down 26 a little bit, just kind of test it out. Um, look at that nice view down there. Now, this is my normal commute. I'm just headed to work today. Normal commute. Um, some people might be a little jealous. I mean, what better reason to ride a motorcycle than I get this beautiful commute? And I don't always go this way. I often go a way that's uh, a little less curvy and gets me uh, lower elevation faster. But uh, that's when the weather's bad. Because when the weather's bad in the valley, it's really bad up here. Or sometimes it's really bad up here and the weather's fine in the valley. But, um, yeah. One thing I do find interesting with a bigger bike is I don't feel the need to go fast. I know it seems like the little bike, you just got to prove something on it. You know, rev it way up and get going. And this bike, maybe it's just the style and the way you're sitting. Like more aggressive sitting just kind of encourages you to push it a bit. Well, this big old bike, you're like, I'm just riding a recliner down the road. Why in the world would I, uh, would I want to go fast in my recliner? This is um, this is Bald Peak Road. I'm about to stop sign. I'll uh, I kind of take a left. Not really. There's uh, it's a weird intersection, but I'll kind of take a, a slight left, almost straight, and that'll be a mountaintop road. It's just uh, these are these are roads that uh, on the weekends you call a few motorcycles and little sports cars through here. The speed limit is 55. You see, I'm only doing 40, 45 right now. Um, just because most people don't go 55 on this road, it's it's hard to all the curves, but that's the speed limit. So, uh, what better way to have a little fun, not break any limits, by coming up to a very curvy road with a decent speed limit? So, I, I know on Sonus, I'll uh, I'll often come through here at 50, 55 just having a good time but I also try not to do that in the morning because I know I'm not quite quite alert enough and, uh, and in the morning too the more likelihood of animals wanting to jump out and go across I've seen deer and 
raccoons and you know, all kind of animals went across the, the road. Don't ask me why. Don't ask me why they're crossing the road. But they went across the road. And uh, I don't really want to stop them. Look at that view, huh? Newburgh down there. I think they put a winery in over here. Well, who else has a fancy gate like that? So here's this intersection I was talking about. I mean, it's still just a, a four-way intersection, but you got two straights and left. So I'll take this slight, slight left. Slight left. Sharp corners with some gravel. Don't go too fast with gravel. I think it's fun. They got the barrels around there, so you can see the see the utility pole there. Nice view for those people. If I left it on there long enough, try to show the view and drive safely. Oh yeah, the clutch needs to be adjusted. So one thing I know is the carb adjustment. Um, I saying carb adjustment and uh, clutch adjustment. That's probably about it, really. Bike's pretty solid, but I mean, you expect it to be something decent with only 20, less than 22,000 miles on it. Supposedly, the uh, the first owner, I say supposedly, it's as evidence back it up. First owner came from Georgia. Well, not the first owner, the last owner came from Georgia. He, he rode, uh, he rode the bike from Savannah out here to Portland. I don't think he took the direct route. I think he kind of tooled around a bit and had a good time. He was, uh, he was headed down to Cimarron, New Mexico. And uh, he only had a couple weeks to get there. He wasn't sure how to get the bike there. So uh, he sold the bike. He's going down to Cimarron, New Mexico to work at the, the trading post for uh, Philmont Scott Ranch. They got a decent deal on the bike. Hoping to ride it for a little while, clean it up a little bit, get it running a little better, and I'll let it go. I didn't quite, I don't quite like the riding position. Fit well though. I think I fit on this bike well. It tells me I just need a bigger bike with a different riding position. But I really enjoy cleaning it up. I mean, that tank was kind of dull and dingy. And uh, if you've seen the pictures, well, maybe I'll put a picture right here. Quite shiny now. I didn't get a good before. I should have, but I didn't get a good before picture. I just had a few minutes and like, well, let me see if I can make this thing shiny. So I did the method. Uh, I saw some of the other YouTubers. There's a few different ones, so I'm not gonna mention any. Um, use the uh, the clay. Um, so I actually got this uh, quick shine stuff. So I use that. And then uh, the uh, the clay kit, rub down the clay, wipe that. Uh, use some rubbing compound, wipe that. And then uh, did a couple coats of polish. And my polish was like the I guess the nicer polishes tells you not to let it dry. So you don't let it dry and wipe it off, buff it off. So I did that, and then some wax. So I'll uh, I'll see if I get a picture of all that. You can see the stuff I used. Um, yeah, to make this thing shiny. And then if I do this, uh, if I do buy an older bike and clean it and try to sell it again, I'll, I'll, I'll try to get some good before and afters. Just, it seems like a neat idea. I get to ride different bikes. I can ride different bikes and maybe make a dollar or two buying and selling.
hard curve that I've had gravel in it. I don't know where the gravel comes from, but I've had gravel in it. No gravel today. That's nice. Yeah, I don't ride this bike very much. I want to keep it shiny for one thing. Although yesterday the, my uh, my road was a little muddy still, so I got a, a little bit of shining to do. But um, yeah, and it doesn't have ABS. I like that ABS. And the front brake, you gotta kind of gotta kind of get your hand full of it to to stop. I like the a little more sensitive on my newer bike. I hear something, maybe there's a car leaving. Mm -hmm. I gotta remember to turn off the fuel when I get to work. I didn't do that yesterday, so. Uh, fuel leaking everywhere and drops on the exhaust so I, uh, I made sure that was all dried off before I uh, before I left then we'll have flames shooting out the back So this is Mountaintop, um, no this is Bell I think, no, no this is Mountaintop, intersect with Bell, I'll turn left on the Bell, uh, views aren't too bad here but there's starting to be more and more trees, a little, a little less hillside so there's more houses, my houses have decent views, this is the tightest corner I got I think. Got a little swoopy swoopy. Sun's coming up. Here's the bed and breakfast. Sometimes I think I should just stay at the bed and breakfast one day. Grab my wife and we just go right there. Sun is bright. Get my shades on. Mm, my shades are dirty. Not that bright, I guess. Little debris, little road and uh, gravel and dirt in the road. But yeah, it's bigger bike, a little more stable, a little more secure in the in the cornering. Definitely more secure just heading down the highway. There's another visor I can put on it. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that here in a little while and ride a bit more and see what I think about the big visor. I bet I'm gonna like it. But I wonder how much fuel economy it all cost me. Although right now I don't know that I'm getting much fuel economy anyway, so maybe it just doesn't matter. Yeah, these blinkers are a little different, you push them down. I got used to my bike, I just push them, and it's easier. You push, push, done. I push down things a little, a little hard at times, I don't know how to get it. I also used the clock being on my instrument panel. There's a clock on this thing. Okay, that was really bright. It's 45 through here. The sun's so bright. Not a bad idea. Just a beautiful morning commute. Up over the hill, landed by the light. I won't start singing.
Those are different views of the valley. A little farm, century farm down there in the valley. Nice little spot for a farm. So in case you wonder, Century Farm, it's a, something you can get from the state if the farm has been around for a hundred years or more, kind of recognizing our, our farmers. Just don't seem to have a lot of, a lot of good working family farms. They're becoming rare. I thought it was going to be shady through here. Eh, 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 bright. Wow, I need a car there, there we go. See how big it is here. Anyway, that's a fun part of my commute. Now I get on the uh, on the highway, drive the Sherwood and the Florida.